In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can grow your Amazon FBA online arbitrage business by using key performance indicators. I'm going to be going through a number of things in this video with the view of being jam-packed, give you a load of value, loads of things that you can implement into your online arbitrage business that can really skyrocket your business and expand your business to the next level while outsourcing your business, while being in control of your business, while being able to manage your business successfully. Okay, my name is Kev from lifesuccessengineer.com. Over the last sort of two years, I have step-by-step step sort of outsourced my online arbitrage business to a point where I'm most likely 95% outsourced. And a lot of the work that I've done has come from successfully using key performance indicators with every role, every task that I outsource that allows me to keep control of my business. Okay, this video was actually designed to be a live stream. So I've got a couple of notes that I really wanna get through. I'm gonna share with you a lot of the, the content, really allow you guys to take massive action in your businesses, to grow your businesses. But unfortunately, I've not been able to do a live stream YouTube have, um, they cut off my live stream earlier, technical difficulties, and I'm not 100% sure when I'm going to be live streaming again because of something that happened in that video. Anyway, that being said, the goal of this video, I'm just gonna go through the goals of this video. Um, the goals of this video are, I wanna talk about the, the key skill for any entrepreneur, any business owner. Okay, you as a business owner of your Amazon FBA business, I believe there's, there's a number of key skills, but I want to speak about just particularly one. I'm going to talk about what are key performance indicators and actually explain and define what key performance indicators are. I'm going to go through the thought process behind setting useful key performance indicators because you want to be using, at the end of this video, I want you to be able to implement very good key performance indicators that will allow you to grow your business. I'm gonna share with you a number of KPIs that I have in my business, and then I'm gonna give you some real practical insights on exactly how you can use this key performance indicator phrase, this principle, to really take massive action and start to see where you maybe got bottlenecks, where you can grow, where you maybe not on target. Okay, so a couple of, of things. Uh, my last uh, YouTube live, what I did was I introduced myself a little bit, but what I want to do really is I just want to explain that everything that I've done from being in my warehouse now to my virtual team, I've been able to do this by having key performance indicators. I thought in my mind that for me to outsource any task, I need to be able to know whether that that element, that task, whether it's virtual or physical, is operating as it should. As, as per the standards, the business standards that I set for that particular task. So that's what I set out to do. And that's why I give credit to the systems that I've put in place, the, the KPIs that I work to that allows me to, to keep control of my business and we've been able to scale um, to the point where I've been able to quit my job, my partner's quit my job, we've recruited a number of virtual assistants as well as physical assistants. And in 2017, we are looking to to break the, the million pounds barrier in, to, in terms of total revenue. That's where I come from. That's why I can speak to you openly and honestly and open and transparent as well and share the experiences that I've had if you do have any questions, please comment below. Obviously, I'll be publishing this instead of it being a live stream. This was designed to be a live stream so I can interact a little bit, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to live stream this. So, before I get into the content, what I want to do, I want to just quickly um, focus in and say that wherever stage you're at, whether you are a, a very early on, if you're a beginner in online arbitrage, whether you're more advanced, whether you're in the process of outsourcing yourself and really scaling up, we've got Q3 and Q4 around the corner. I want to just stress that this is a tool for you to make strategic decisions, okay? You want to be using KPIs to your advantage. Having said that, 
you also need to focus in on the bread and butter. You need to focus in on the things that you have most control of that's going to have the biggest impact in your business. So if you are still sourcing, I don't expect you to stop sourcing, start doing all this uh, electronic work for you to control and create all these management systems if you're still heavily in the trenches. You're gonna focus in on what's gonna give you the, the biggest return on investment. Okay, you don't just have return on investment in products, you also have it in your time. So you need to really strategically decide what you're focusing your time on and leverage yourself as much as possible. Also, um, and one thing that I would say, and this is something that I live by, is you want to be focusing in on at least one growth task per day. So if that means you can start creating working procedures, if you can start to think in your mind how you can outsource an element of your business, you want to be just, just taking small little baby steps every single day. That's all I've done over the space of two years. I've taken one step every single day in the right direction and then I find myself at this position now being able to hopefully help you guys take action in your businesses. So let's get into the content then. I don't want it to, to, I appreciate your time. I appreciate um, uh, you sticking with me here. So the content, the number one key skill for any entrepreneur, I, I believe, or one of, one of the key skills is anticipation. The skill of anticipation is going to give you a major advantage in your business. If you can anticipate what's going to happen with your sales, what's going to happen in the performance of your business, that gives you a big advantage. So the anticipation for your business is a key skill you want to start honing in on and really understanding on how you can really empower yourself to take action before negative things happen. One way we can anticipate is key performance indicators. You want to be able to see whether you're trending up or down, whether you have weaknesses in your area, in your business, you have bottlenecks in your business, whatever the case is, anticipation is critical and key performance indicator is the one is one of the tools that you can use. So what are key performance indicators and how would you define them and what is the criteria for a good, useful key performance indicator? So a KPI is basically a, a metric in your business that allows you to see instantly whether it's a healthy metric or a negative, an unhealthy metric. So for example, if you have a, a goal of £20,000 worth of sales in your business, if you are above that, it's healthy. You've, you've hit your target. If you're below that, then you are unhealthy. You've not hit your target. Basically, how I've come up with a criteria for a KPI is number one, a clearly defined outcome within a predetermined time. Now that outcome has to be a metric of some sort, whether that is weight, sales, units, whatever it is, you want to have a clearly defined outcome that you want in a predetermined time. So just by saying, I want to have uh, to grow my sales next month, that's not good enough. You want to be saying, I want to, grow, I want to have 10,000 pounds worth of sales in July 2000, by, in 30 days of July 2017. You want to be very clear and you want to be uh, as, as accurate as you can in a time period. Then you want to think about this. The metric needs to have at least a single or multiple direct action influences. Now that sounds a little bit complicated. What I'm trying to say is you want to make sure that any of your KPIs has a direct or multiple direct influences in terms of you can influence that directly. So sales, you can influence your sales by purchasing more. Okay, you can impact your sales, you can grow from 10, 10k in 30 days to 20k in 30 days directly by purchasing more in your business. Okay, that, that is what I mean by a direct influence. If you don't have these, you're going to be struggling to get a KPI because KPIs are all about numbers. It's all about um, pounds revenue, dollars revenue. It's all about weight or units, something in terms of a number that you can see 
black and white, is it at this level or not? So what's the thought, the thought process of creating a, a useful, effective KPI? So the, the thought process that you need to have in your mind is you want to be working backwards. And I'm going to give you an example and a selection of quality questions that you can ask yourself on how you can, def how you can set up a KPI. So let's say you wanted to have £20,000 worth of sales. Actually, let, let me go a bit easier. Let's say you want to have £10,000 worth of sales in 30 days. The first thing you want to say to yourself is, what is it that you want? So you've just said you want to have £10,000 worth of sales in 30 days. Then what you want to ask yourself is, what is the business metric that has the biggest impact on your sales? I would say it's your purchasing. The more you purchase, the more impact you're going to have in your sales. Then you can ask yourself, well, how much stock do you need to purchase to get that sale? To get that amount of sales and if we're using just standard numbers let's say you need to purchase five thousand pounds worth of products to get uh, ten thousand pounds worth of sales you then know in the 30 days you want to spend five thousand pounds from that these are all we're all we're setting up key performance indicators while going through this process from that you can then ask yourself well how many how much how much do you need to spend every day so it might be in this case 167 pounds per day you can then start to look at your amazon dashboard for example and see what your average sell for price is so let's say you've been selling all year just have a look on your amazon dashboard and see um, what your average sell for price is let's say it's 20 pounds you can then say well if i'm going for rule of thumb i'm selling for double then my buy for is about 10 pounds so I then know I need to get, I need to purchase 500 units to get to that £5,000 spent mark. These are all KPIs. We've gone through the process of really defining some very good KPIs that's going to help you get into what is letting you down. So are you spending enough each day? Are you buying the units that you require? Are you on target to meet your, your sales revenue? Now that was a um, that was just a basic example. Now, what I want to do is I want to explain. I want to just go through a number of KPIs that I have in my business. Hopefully, by me sharing a number of KPIs that I have in my business, it will trigger your your mind to think right. I need to to get this, or I need to get that. Also, then I'm going to speak about how I practically put them in my business so I can actually manage them on a week-to-week, day-to-day basis. So what I did in terms of setting up KPIs in my business, I, first of all, separate my operations from virtual to warehouse, okay? Um, I have control of my warehouse here. I have control of my virtual team. Then virtually, I put in stages. So you've got sourcing, you've got purchasing, You've got um, your Amazon Seller Central Management. You've got your repricer. You've got your infantry health. You've got multiple stages virtually that your virtual team can look after. In the warehouse, you've got obviously you, you've got your, the the amount of units that you ship in. If you've got any shipment discrepancies, if you've got inbound performance, you've got a number of physical uh, KPIs in the warehouse. But the first thing to really do is put it into stages. Then I'm going to go through a number of the KPIs that I have in, in my business in each stage. So sourcing, I've got a list in front of me, that's why I'm looking at the computer. So sourcing, um, I track how many products we have found. So I have a, a, a team of virtual assistants that are researching every single day sourcing products. I know how many products each virtual assistant should be finding each day and from that i know what the total number of products that should be found that's a key performance indicator for me so i know immediately how we down on our sourcing i also look at what our total winners are the percentage so if you're ideally you want to have a hundred percent winners for all the products that you find but realistically that's not the case so you want to be setting a key performance indicator if you can have 70 percent of your products found that turn into winners 
you need to decide what your business standard is. In terms of sourcing, I also have repeat products and new products. Are these products that we've sourced in the past or are they brand new products that we've never sourced? Now, the, this is turned into a really good KPI for me because in terms of the repeat products, what this allows you to do, it really allows you to find out if, for example, you have a number of products that are now repeat buys. Let's say we're in June 2017 now. Let's say we, uh, we find a product that was purchased in February. It was then purchased in May, and now it's purchased in June, for example. Depending on what the prices are and everything, you can start to see and you can start to build a bigger picture on our stores do stores have a, um, a pattern in the deals that they have throughout the year? So, for example, if one of the stores is doing a, a, a buy one, get one free, and that's happening every three months, you can start to anticipate, hang on a minute, we're getting a lot of repeat here. Does this mean, and we've had repeats for the last sort of, we've had it in, in February and in, in May, does that mean we're expecting again in July? So that then starts to train your sourcing team and your reviewing team, uh, your team leaders, to be proactive and say, right, next month we may have a, a deal here, we might have a deal here. And it's all come from really starting to think what's happening in terms of our sourcing. What are your margins? So that's a great key performance indicator. What is your average margin? Obviously, you as, your, as the business owner, you wanna grow your business if you can increase your margin, then then great. But if you get into it a little bit more, you can start to range your products. How many products have you got from 30 to 40%? How many products have you got from 40 to 50, 50 to 60? Whatever you want to sort of separate them, but you can then see are you whereabouts are you drifting? Whereabouts are you going down towards the lower end or the higher end? Obviously, the higher the margin is the better. You're going to make more money. But... What this leads into is if, for example, you have your margin is dropping down towards you know, your 40s and your 30%, you know you're going to have an increase in your minimum products at your minimum that are set at minimum in your repricer. So depending on what you use in your repricer, I use Repricer Express. I highly recommend it. I would uh, anticipate that you're going to have a, an increase in products at minimum if your average, if you're starting to source more at the lower end, okay? It allows you just to intervene before it gets to that point. That's what key performance indicators are all about. So I'm just gonna go through some of the purchasing ones. Are we purchasing 100% of the winners that we find? Obviously, if you're still heavily in the business, if you're sourcing and then purchasing, you're gonna purchase 100%. But as, a, as you start to outsource yourself and, and really automate and, and, and delegate, you want to be able to see what is happening in your business. So you want to see, are we purchasing 100% of the winners that we find? Very important. What is your average units per item that you're purchasing? So again, if your average, you've got to, you've got to analyze each product as it comes, but as an overview, you can see what is my average. So in this case, um, in, in, in a, an example, let's say your average unit, every time you purchase a, a product, you're only buying two of them, and then you're running out of stock immediately, you know you need to increase across the board. So it really allows me to see, well, why are we only purchasing twos and threes? Are we not finding the products? What's happening with the sales rank? Are we purchasing wrong? What is our uh, process in reviewing? How, how do we need, have we slacked off? Do I need to get into my reviewing system? That just comes from one number. Your hazardous material, your hazardous uh, ASINs. Obviously, if you're, not, if you're purchasing, you're not gonna purchase your hazardous hazard materials. But me as a business owner, I have products come in and we've had scenarios of, we've now got hazardous material in the warehouse. So it needs to be returned and it doesn't want to be shipped to Amazon, obviously. But it's a number that you want to focus on. Your total purchasing prediction. What I mean by that is you can set up, and I'm going to get into 
practical insights on how you can set these things up, you can set up a running total in your spreadsheets and then you can anticipate, are you gonna hit the target? So, every single day, whether it's the first of the month or the last day of the month, I know um, at this rate of purchasing, are we gonna hit 100%, the 100% mark? It's very easy to set up these things and it helps massively. I can instantly see on my sheet, we are going to hit 150% of our target, 80% of our target, 100%, whatever it is, you can instantly see your Amazon Seller Central account. Now, Amazon, they're gonna, they, they have a lot of key performance indicators on you anyway, but these are the things that you want to measure yourself. So your customer message response time, your seller feedback rating, your performance notifications, all these things, your, all these things are, are very, very important for you to manage. Now, Amazon, they're gonna tell you if you're doing something wrong, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're going to, let you know about it, but you want to be able to act before um, before it gets to a point it gets serious. So if you're getting some uh, seller feedback that's negative, for example, let's say you're getting you're selling some products not as described, you can then get to the root cause of that and understand that in your warehouse something's happening. Your quality control's not up to speed. Somebody's cutting corners. What is happening here? Okay, it's really, really good. It allows me to see just from a number what is happening in my business. Infantry health. So infantry health is your infantry age. Amazon, they've increased, they've increased the storage fees. So it's important for you to manage these. So how many, how many ASINs, how many units have you got above six months? How many of your total infantry, what is your percentage age of zero to three months. You can really start to get into this. See, in my business, I want to have 85% of my products on a zero to three months age because it's all about getting them in and out. It's all about snowballing. It's all about ramping up your business. So you can really have a look at your infantry, infantry planning. Amazon give you all this information. You can really start to see what is happening. If you start to increase the number of ASINs that are now going older than you want, you can then start to again find the root cause, what is happening. And I apologize that I'm just throwing a load of um, KPIs at you, but I want to hopefully ignite something in you that you might go, oh, I need to get this, I need to get this. That's my goal of this video. The Repricer Express. Repricer Express is great because it'll tell you what you've got at max, what you've got at min, all these different metrics so if you're buy, if you've got a load of products that are sat at your minimum because you're not selling, you can then start to see well, what's happening with my margins. Are we buying too, is our margins too low when we're buying our products? Again, it's a great, it's a great, great um, key performance indicator. A couple of key performance indicators that I'm starting to work on now, and these are interesting ones, are timing related. So, I, I, I gave an example in my live stream that did work earlier. If you go to Costa, if you make an order at the Costa, by the time you drove round to the, to, the count, to the counter to pay and pick up your, your drinks, if you look in the background, they've got a screen that shows you, you, your car's there, and the time you're waiting. It goes from green to red. In my mind, I'm setting up some, some KPIs, some systems in my business, which will allow me to track how long has it been from my sourcing to now my reviewing team has reviewed my sourcing lists? Okay, because obviously the longer that goes on, the chances are deals will change, your out of stock products, all these things. So it's the same for purchasing. It's the same for shipping, all these things. So timings is a great form of key performance indicator. And it's a little bit more advanced. I, I do appreciate that. That's sort of the level that I'm, I'm, I'm starting to look into myself. Sales, now sales is ultimately what it's all about. You can have the, the number one key performance indicator is what has your sales been in the last 30 days? That is ultimately the bread and butter of your business. That's what we're here to do. But you can see what is your average sell for? What is your average buy for? Do you need to increase that? How many units you're purchasing? How many units you're selling for? These are all key performance indicators for you to track. In your warehouse, if you're not using a warehouse, if, you can use, if you're using a prep service, in my warehouse, I track 
how many daily units we've shipped, inbound performance, shipment discrepancies, and every single one of these metrics tells me everything I need to know. I then have meetings every single week, a very brief meeting, five minutes it takes me, for warehouse, virtual, I get a, a, an update on all these numbers, and then I, then I know immediately. Now Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn in one of his seminars, you find it on YouTube, he had a great example of, um, he, he says, you know, these KPIs, it's all about your numbers. If you uh, conduct in a meeting or if you want to, if you're outsourcing different uh, parts of your business to somebody else, all you're interested in is the number. You know, obviously you want to grow your team, you want to expand your team, you want to train your team, but as Jim Rohn would say, we, we don't care about the story of why we're not hitting the target. We don't care really what's, what's why it's, it's happened in terms of um, what, what could have happened, maybe you're late, maybe you, I don't know, as you used to say, your, your homework got eaten by the dog, we're not really bothered, we need to know what is, your, what is that number. If you're, say, if, you, if you're saying you want to ship 200 a day and you're only shipping 100 and you've still got 200 units in the, in the warehouse, I don't want to know the story, I want to know what, what is going on, what's the root cause, why can't we get these products out? Yeah, I'm not particularly bothered about whether it's raining outside. I just need to know what is happening so I can get into the root cause and then obviously deal with it, systematize it, and, in, in, and improve. So I know this, this video has gone on a little bit longer. Obviously, um, I, I did want this to be a live stream, but some practical insights that I want to share with you. So number one, job descriptions. It's really clear for you to have every single role set out in your online arbitrage business and have specific job descriptions on what you want that role to do. Because they, they are your key performance indicators for each role. And it's really your responsibility as the business owner to tell your virtual assistant team, all your employees, what you expect of them. I also recommend that you use Excel, Dropbox, or um, Google Sheets. You can obviously share them from people around the world, your virtual team. It also allows you to do a lot of automation. I want to also recommend that you have workout sheets for every sort of stage of your business. Okay, so one of the, <coughs> I asked a question, I asked several people questions before I was gonna do this live stream on what is it that you want me to cover? One of the, uh, the questions that I got back from a, from a good friend um, was what do I want no extra work. I don't want extra work. No, you know, as a business owner, you don't want extra work, but you want to see what is happening in your business. If you're bringing a manager in, you want to see what's happening in your business. Okay, so the way you can do this with no extra work, first of all, set up sheets for everything. So if you've got replenishing sheet, uh, out of stock sheet, if you've got, you obviously, your purchasing log, you've got your sources, you've got all these different sheets. Then at the top of every sheet, you can set up your KPIs. You can set up the automation of the, the Excel spreadsheets in your KPIs <coughs> at the top of your sheets. So you can open up any, any um, stage of your business, your replenishing, for example, and you can see the KPIs you've set for yourself in your that system. Now, that's useful on a sort of... Um, a role by role basis. So if you've got team leaders in your business, they can look at all the KPIs for the sources. Okay, if you've got managers in your business, they can obviously look at all the KPIs and the team leaders and the sources. You as the business owner, what I did in my business, I start I created an overview, a business overview performance sheet, which allows me to see the over the entire performance of my business but also key performance indicators. This isn't me having to open up different sheets. This is simply a sheet that has a lot of the KPIs that I've already mentioned to you, and it simply goes from, I set the business standard, and then it simply goes, is it positive or is it negative? Is it healthy, is it unhealthy? Is it green or is it red? That's all I need to see. 
I can then see we are green, 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 red, 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 what's happening in the reds. I can then dig down deeper. I can look into my replenishing, what is happening. I can look down into my sourcing, what is happening. That is, that's been gold for me in my business. What's really allowed me to see practically what is happening. Very easily done, simple conditional formatting. You can set this up easily on an Excel sheet. You can get a virtual assistant to populate it for you. You can get your employees to populate this for you. You can, you can automate that process. You can even automate Excel to do this for you as well, depending on how you've set your sheets up. Simply by using the, you know, obviously your Excel functions. Um, the next thing I want to say is working procedures. Obviously working procedures, if you are, if you are sharing working procedures with your team on how to do certain things, they will influence the KPIs. So if, if your business is, uh, if you really, if you want something done, you really want to have a, a working procedure for it, which will allow it that by following that working procedure will comply with that key performance indicator. Okay. Another thing is Asana. I recommend, even if you've got one virtual assistant, don't matter how many virtual assistants you've got, implement Asana immediately. It's a great tool. It's a great management tool that will allow you to assign tasks to different people. You can put them on a routine. You can put priorities. You can do all these things. Okay. Really, really useful and powerful Asana. It's made a massive difference. Um, so in terms of the video is pretty much complete. Um, I want to thank you so much for watching this. I do apologize for those guys that watched this, this live stream earlier and then I got cut off. I, I, I honestly, I don't know what I did. I'm looking into it. I don't understand really what I went, where I went, went wrong. Um, I'm still learning YouTube myself. Unfortunately, I'm not going to, from the looks of it, I'm not going to be able to do a live stream for a period of time. Who knows? Hopefully they, they review it. But if you've got any questions at all about online arbitrage and anything that I mentioned, please comment below. Obviously, I'm talking to you about these different KPIs and how you can grow and, 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 and really systematize your business. But I understand we're all at different stages. You've got to think about your bread and butter. You've got to think about how you can focus in on that, that highest impact task. And then if you've got an hour a day, if you've got half an hour a day, even if you've got 10 minutes, even if you can write one line of a working procedure that is growth related, that will allow you to outsource or improve your business in some way, I highly recommend you just spending at least one, one moment in time. I, um, I really appreciate you watching this video up until this point. If you want more step-by-step -step in terms of me showing you a number of these things, showing you how I set up my live purchasing log, showing you how I've set up my running total on my, my business, I do have a course, Online Arbitrage Mastery. I do believe um, I'm always growing to it. I'm always adding to it. I am most likely going to be doing some more lessons at some point this month from starting to grow wholesale and things but it le courses lessons they allow me to do a, a screen capture and showing you all these things step by step you know showing you exactly do this then do that put this formula there put that formula there you're looking out for this and you're looking out for that so this has been kept from lifesuccessengineer.com thank you very much for um, watching this video if you've got any questions at all, like I said, I, I uh, comment below, let me know. Um, key performance indicators, it really does change the game. Even even last year when I outsourced, this is just the final, final thing, even when I outsourced purchasing last year, it, I had to ask the question, how does the person purchasing know how much credit I've got? Okay, so I set up a credit file, a, a credit management, a capital management that every time you order from a particular store using a particular card, it automatically comes off the balance. So then you can start to set up um, what your uh, availability is to capital. 
Do you need repayment? And then that, that then spirals into a financial person that could potentially look into repaying uh, certain cards that you might have to pay because you've gone over that your KPI in terms of your threshold that you need to pay back. This is, it all stems from KPIs. That's the whole point of this video. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. I hope you got value. Give me a thumbs up, please. I really, your engagement in this video would be fantastic. And take care. Have a fantastic day. And I wish you all the best coming up into Q3, Q4 in your online arbitrage business. Cheers.